Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be going over a blood typing example problem. So in the previous lecture, we went over something called codominance. So codominance is when you have two different alleles that express themselves if they are present. So this blood, blood typing is a great example of that. So for blood types, you have A, you have B, you have AB, and you have O. So AB, blood type, it's the same allele, but two different versions of that allele. So that person expresses both the A and the B phenotype. Remember, O is the universal donor, so O types can give to anyone. But O types cannot receive blood from A or A, B, or B because they produce antigens that attack that other blood. Also, today we're going to be talking about rhesus factor or the RH factor. So you can also be RH negative or RH positive. That is just a complete dominance system. And we're also going to talk about another group today called the MN group, which is another example of codominance. Uh, so have, I set up a little example problem here to go over this. And so let's go into it and practice how we can do genetics based on blood typing. So here, as we do for all these example problems in this series, uh, remember here, read it, try it yourself, and then play the video and see where you are making your mistakes. You want to do this on your own. You want to practice and, you know, getting this down and practicing as best you can do because you can see, oh, that's where I screwed up setting up my problem and that's learning. So focus on that when working on this as well. So here, many different genes encode cell surface antigens that may be found on the human red blood cell. So if you have a red blood cell here, you know, the stereotypical, you have different antigens sticking off. So maybe the triangle one here is A and the, you know, the blob here is the B antigen. Um, so the genes uh, for the ABO blood group and the RH factor both determine what types of blood transfusion a patient may see they receive as these blood groups can't trigger transfusion reaction. So, you know, AB is the universal acceptor because they don't have a, any anti-A or anti-B antibodies. AB, pos, AB negative is um, can't receive AB positive, though. AB positive is technically the universal acceptor. Um, so the RH factor still does play a role there in blood typing. So you can, um, you know, reject a blood type based on RH factor as well. So here was I, uh, so as these blood groups can't trigger transfusion reactions, um, the MN group. So another group here that we don't talk about too often. I just wanted to throw it in because following three characters. So this is called the MN group group. This is encoded at a third locus does not trigger a transfusion reaction. So this one doesn't involve a transfusion reaction, but the RH factor and ABO type can cause a transfusion reaction. Um, so the alleles, dominant system, and loci for these genes are listed below. So let's look at the setup of the problem here. So here, these are just the ABO. So when you write these for making, you know, your crosses and Punnett squares, blood type is represented by a capital I for the dominant forms, because this is a co-dominant system. So here, IA would represent the A type, IB would represent the B type, and a little lowercase i represents the recessive type, or O. Um, so here for O, you'd write O type, or, you know, I, I, little i, little i like that. Um, whereas, you know, an A type would be the homozygous uh, dominant or the heterozygous version. Same for the B type here. So another heterozygous version as well. And then AB would look like this. So that's how you would write these alleles out um, for the blood typing. Now RH factor, uh, you could you know write RH negative, RH positive. I'm using D in this example. So D is RH factor on a red blood cell. For capital D, lowercase d is none. This is a complete dominant system. So um, D is you know positive and lowercase d out is the recessive version. Um, so a positive means has the RH factor. Uh, so you know has the RH factor. Either of these situations, RH negative, 
is homozygous recessive. And then MN, which is found on chromosome four here. So we write these with a, an L and an M and an L and an N. <laughs> really made a tongue twister for myself here. So the M antigen is then presented on red blood cells. So in that case, in the N one here, this is another example of codominance. So this form here, LM, LN, would have both antigens. And then this one would be LN, this one would be LM. So being able to write these out is important for making your cross for the question. Okay, so now here's the question. I'll read it first and then you can then pause it and see if you can work through based on the information I've given you here. So a man has type MN B plus blood and is heterozygous for type B in homozygous dominant at the RH locus. His spouse is type M AB negative. Predict the possible phenotypes of their children and give the expected frequencies of each phenotype. So, all right, there's the question. Now is the time to pause it, but I'm going to work through this and then reread it again and work on setting up our problem here. So a man is type MN. So we write that out. We start, you know, thinking about what this cross will be. LM, LN for MN, B plus blood. So B plus could be... Okay, it says it right here. Heterozygous for type B and homozygous dominant at the RH. So heterozygous for type B, heterozygous type B carries the O type and homozygous dominant for RH. So RH, remember, was the D uh, for our character. So right here would be the first cross. And then we're crossing this. Spouse is type M, AB negative. So now for uh, type M would be, it has to be both. So here, I didn't write both up here, but it has to be both because it's either one or the other. There's not an O type like we have for blood. Uh, so here for type M, it'd be LM, LM. AB negative, so we have IA, IB, and then negative is the recessive version, so lowercase d, lowercase d, so homozygous recessive there. So there's our cross. So predict the possible phenotypes of their children and give expected frequencies for each phenotype. Wow. This is a trihybrid cross. A trihybrid cross, if you do that in the form of Punnett squares, would be a 64 square Punnett square. So what did we learn in a previous chapter when doing these crosses that could help us? So these are also, one thing you can see from the problem, chromosome four, chromosome one, chromosome nine. So these all sort independently from each other. And one trick you can do when they sort independently from each other in their typical Mendelian genetics is that you can use branching. That's the big key for this problem. And one of the reasons why I added this extra variable here was to show how branching could be used for this. So remember for branching, you do, for in this case, three monohybrid crosses. So the first cross we have is LM, LN, cross LM, LM. So I'll write this out real quick. I'm not gonna go into details about you know, how to set up a monohybrid cross that should be known by now. Alrighty, so here are the results from our first cross. So in this first cross, I'm gonna remove the Ls because up here, if you look at it, so his spouse is type M and wrote MN there. So I'm gonna remove the Ls just to make it easier and only write one letter as well. So here we have um, a half chance of M and a half chance of MN. So you can abbreviate that to make it easier now. Uh, so that's how you wanna start your branching. The second part of the branching is to do the blood type cross. So we'll do that down right down here. So this is step one. Step two would then be the blood typing. So blood typing, you have, I'll just rewrite the cross here quick. So you're only looking at the blood type cross. So write out the cross now. Well, write out the Punnett square now. So here are the results of that Punnett square. So to write, you know, what we have for this answer here, uh, I'll write it right down here. We have a one quarter chance of AB. I'll remove the eyes because we can see these now. We have a 50% chance of B. 
and we have, so both of these here would be B, and then we have a 25% chance of A. So there's the possible blood types we have, and you could start to see the branching we could do. Now let's also do the last cross here. And I'll write that one down here and we'll leave the branching for the middle of the page. Uh, but one little thing we see of this last cross, so here uh, is the RH cross. So you set this up, this is a, you know, a true breeding cross here, if you think of it like that. So all of these, you could do the Punnett square to check it, all of these will be heterozygous. So all will be RH positive because they're heterozygous. Uh, so I don't need to do that one. Every answer is gonna be one. It's a one to one to one to one to one. It's all RH, RH positive. Uh, so you technically don't need to include that. Every single result here is going to be RH positive. So that's a little uh, trick for you. So now let's start with the branching here. So you start with you know the first cross you did. So one half M, that now then branches. So the next uh, character is blood type. So it then branches to uh, one quarter B type, AB type, down to one half. Oh, I, I wrote one half right there. I meant one quarter A. Um, so one half B. And let's also just throw uh, one quarter uh, A type right here. So there's your branching. Then the other option is one half MN. Same branching setup. Isn't this much easier than doing a trihybrid cross? Now you solve it. Uh, so this one is one half times one fourth, and I'll write all these out quick. All right, so I wrote out all the multiplications here, and now we just solve it. So you just multiply them all. So here, this one is one eighth M, M, not N, M, A, B, Positive. Remember, all of them are going to be positive. So you don't need to, if, say for example, this branch, this cross here was different and it was ended up being three quarter um, plus and then one quarter negative. You'd have to add an additional two branches to each of these terms. So you can see how that would branch a lot more, but it's still solvable. So then you take one half times, so let's say you were mn b negative you take one half times one half times one fourth so you could get your probability from that um so one sixteenth would be the chances uh so yeah just a little tip there that you can do that if this wasn't set up the way it is all right so then a lot of these here are one eighth uh the only difference one is this one right here which is one fourth so this is M, B positive. All right, I'm gonna write in the rest real quick. Alrighty, so here are the results. So you just draw a big square around this. And now let's check the question, and make sure we answered it. Always check your question afterwards. So predict the possible phenotypes of their children and give the expected frequencies for each phenotype. So here, these are all the possible phenotypes and including that, that plus afterwards tells you the RH factor. So there's the M phenotype and the also the blood type phenotype. So yeah, that was a problem. So it's just one example problem today, but being able to set up this problem, you can do any blood typing problem and also any branching problem as well. Uh, so this also helps with branching practice too. And that's another reason why I included that MN chromosome part in this as well. Uh, so yes, that's all I have for today. If you have any questions on this, feel free to let me know. Should help uh, reinforce all these uh, important concepts here a little bit better, but let me know if you have any questions. All right, see you all next time. Bye-bye.